February 24th, 941 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Adoran Region. I'm your host, Adoran himself. It is time for a case trial to continue. If you have no idea what's going on, you can check out the playlist in the description below. While you're down there, leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all those fun things you ought to do when supporting a YouTube channel. We are here. We are ready. This is day three of this particular case, and that's a bad sign for us because we don't really have a case here. Uh, and day three is usually the last day that we're allowed to continue with this case. So basically, long story short, we got to solve the entire thing today. Again, check out the playlist if you have no idea what's going on. I don't know why I'm speaking. Like, I, my voice is bouncing up and down. Anyway, Emma, what you got here? So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think we are potentially, and I mean this very hesitantly, doomed. But there's got to be something in our box of, of evidence that I, I'm, I'm just picturing a cardboard box that Phoenix, like, carries with him on a, a wagon or something. It's like, hey, maybe I got something in here. Um, does this piece of paper work? Here's some evidence. Here's this random, like, plastic bag. The plastic bag? That solves everything. You know, that sort of thing. Also, I'm very animated for some reason today. I think the prosecution is just as confused as we are. That is true. Edgeworth is not, doesn't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. The judge, and I mean this with all respect to the judge, the judge certainly has no idea what's going on. So frankly, we got to figure out what we're doing here. After all, Lana saying this? Okay. The victim was murdered in two places at the same time. Oh, good. Okay, Lana is a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Lana! Morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So, how did it go? It's as Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't see capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But, Lana, don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Uh, I just broke my computer for a second. Miss Sky, hmm? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. It belonged to Officer Jake Marshall, and you look surprised about that kind of trace evidence? Bloodstained fingerprints, to uh, be exact. Okay. That's the uh, trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, though, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? Emma. Frankly, I, I, I have no idea if Marshall's actually going to do it, but I'm hoping someone's testimony will be able to help out here. We have to play the cards we're dealt. And unfortunately, I got two, like a two and a seven, both of different. I got a two of spades and the seven of clubs right now. And everything on the board is hearts. I don't play poker. I don't know if that, that. I think that's a bad thing, right? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Good talking. All right, let's do this. February 24th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number nine. I'm animated today. Let's get this going. No one understands anything including the audience. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is... Hmm? hmm? I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. I don't exactly understand the... Hmm? Argue... The, the, thing. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. But... That's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edwards' car. Wow. This is one messed up trial. Phoenix, you've been in four court cases, five, five court cases. All of them have been messed up in some way, shape, or form. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today, I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we, will, we should proceed will eventually reveal itself. That's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. Emma, that's not good for our case. You know that usually. Even though he doesn't know what's going on on himself. Okay, good. At least you understand. That. That's supposed to be an admirable trait. That's my job. That's what I do. I, I don't know what I'm saying, but I say it confidently. All right, you know, whatever. 
Very well. Let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls. The suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Probably what? Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go, Edgeworth. Why? Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir. I am Officer Mike Meekin, sir. My occupation is um that would be murder, sir. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so you're telling us you're a professional killer? Sir, it was me, sir. I'm the one who did it. I'll never kill anyone again, sir. You've got to believe me, sir. Uh, actually, what we'd like to hear... Sir, I'm what you call part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend... How old are you, Meekins? Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir, help me, sir. Officer Meekins. Yes, sir. Give us your report of the crime. Consider that in order. Yes, sir, as you wish, sir. After all, I am part of a generation that must be told what to do, sir. Yo, I don't want to be that guy, but like, Boomer? What? No. You can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. Yes, I can. I'm fault. Bro. Bro, you ain't a prof. You're not a professional murderer. I don't know how loud that is. I can't see my uh, audio thing. Anyway, crime report, sir. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to the guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life, and I, I did it. After that, I passed out. Till another officer smacked me awake. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you. Do what the others before they do unto you. That's the Meekin family motto, sir. I see. Then you fainted and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir. He knocked me upside the head, sir. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work with. All right, let's go find it. Uh, it's been a minute since we uh, last did a... Uh, specific uh, cross-examination here. Um, so what I like to do, as the music begins, is press everything. So you're just going to have to hear a lot of... There we go. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir. I am in charge of hiring new recruits, sir. Yikes. Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transfer was taking place on the day of the crime which means many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of carding the Blue Badger, sir. The Blue Badger? Yes, sir. The lovely police mascot created by the Chief of Detectives, sir. I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transferal process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. The more I do Meekin's voice, the more I'm enjoying it. So a, it, I feel like it fits perfectly, and B, it's kind of just fun to do, like, ah, like definitely. I see. Sounds like a very, uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I relocated the Blue Badger to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? You spotted a suspicious man. Okay. Well, it's, uh... Let's, uh, let's go through here. In order to enter the evidence room, you needed an ID card. Am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. So then, your ID number should be listed on here, right? Let's take a look here. There it is. I found it. This is the one right here. Uh, could you could you please uh, read us the number? I'm the... Uh... Afraid I, uh, my eyesight isn't a big deal, and I also am breaking my own table here. Yes, sir. It's 49895596. That's my number, sir. I see, huh? But the number 49895596.
It shouldn't have been used twice. Please explain, witness. It's, it's no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. Okay. I'm sort of confused now. I was only trained, you were suddenly attacked, that's fine. So you were attacked. Uh, can you tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir. A knife. Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you. What happened then? Well, with the me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. And exactly the, uh, kind of person someone would want to run into. Being a police officer and also... Never mind. That's when I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be... When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I... Had it. I grabbed the man by his collar. I fought for my life. Then I did the... The heinous deed. What exactly do you mean uh, when you say you did it? Because it can be a lot of things. I know I don't look the type. Honestly, sir, but I'm, I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. You took his knife? I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I don't think that's how it works for sure. I, uh, I see. Must have been desperate at that point. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood, and then and the next thing I knew... Oh, yes, go on. You punched me right in my face, sir. After that, you passed out until another officer woke you up. Gotcha. Oh. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious, after all. Uh, right. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too. I woke up crying tears of pain. That's nice. I mean, I mean, it's nice that uh, you recovered. That is. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir. The Blue Badger, sir. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? Oh, Edgeworth, uh, got a point. Um, yes. Uh, yes, Officer Meekins. In regard to that, sir, take a look at this. It was sent to my jail cell. Chief Kent delivered, to it, delivered it to me just this morning, sir. The Chief. Delivered it? What is that? A videotape. Yes, sir, that's absolutely right, sir. A videotape, sir. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room. Whoa. Objection! What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape, and was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. The only thing I'm really good at. So communication with the police department is as good as ever in this situation, which is to say not at all. Oh, uh, then, let's have a look. Show us a video of you murdering the victim. Oh, please stop using that word, murder, sir. It scares me. A video of a real murder. What are we getting ourselves into? Yeah, I, mean, I agree. What exactly is this going to be? And do I have to blur this out? Okay. falls down. There's Meekins. Alright, I'm trying to pick up as much as I can here. So 
there's a few things that popped out at me, but we'll see where where you go from here. Well, I believe we're all seeing the thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? <laughs> all right, Edward, all right, you, let me get in my Edward. This is one of the greatest lines. I'm, I'm going to read as Edward in this uh, game. What the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? Sir, that is the pride and joy of being the great criminal affairs department, sir. It's the blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Well, we have a videotape, whatever that means. Yes, well, anyway, it, uh, whatever, uh, block. The tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter someone in the evidence room and some sort of activity did take place. Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that all right with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir, as you wish, sir. All right, so the videotape exists. Time for that mystery man conversation here. His face can't be clearly seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it. What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has couldn't get in a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin this cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. Okie doke. The mystery man conversation, unfortunately... We're not going to get to this this time. That's next time, everyone. Thank you very much for listening, watching, and supporting in any way, shape, or form that you do. Next time, we learn more about this mystery man. Until then, take care.